just like we did when we opened up class, say 15 out of 15 people, four or five people raised their hand, and if tested, most of them would not be spot on. They would be familiar and not spot on, which means as a body politic, they're incompetent. So what chance do the children have? This is again why we're talking about what we're talking about. And this is why I, I, I repeat sometimes, I say, do you understand? Don't say you don't understand this if you don't. Don't go along with it, ask questions. But be clear of what you're dealing with, because everybody else is. Are we clear? Yep. The rest of the world already understands this. This is, again, why politically, People can come from other nation states in any particular city, in any particular estate designated as a state at North America under U.S. corporate jurisdiction and immediately start making economic progress. Whereas you can go in any of these poor cities and you will see um, empty buildings, it's like Baby Girl. We're looking at Baby Girl and in her mind, there will be imprinted some buildings that she may recall when her mom or dad takes her to preschool or to the babysitter or whatever as she's growing up. And later on, as she gets a little older, say, age of her mother, and she can say, oh, I remember that. That's the building we used to pass when we were going to school, and it was empty for a long time. Beautiful building, but it was empty. But these uh, Indians from India, or well, these Chinese, got it last year. That's where I would get my hair. That's where we go get our soap powder. And they see things like that, and it may never dawn on them why the people in the community could never do that same thing. On them sanctum. They will call it racism because that's what they're trained to say. They will call it prejudice because that's what they're trained to say. Trained to think. But that's not what it is. It's the Constantinian hegemony. That they don't know that they've been calling white supremacy. They still don't know what they're dealing with. Are we clear? Yes. So to be effective to begin to make or to give us a proper platform to be more politically, economically, and socially effective to begin to get more remedy as opposed to loose, emotional, passionate arguments that go nowhere is why you're giving this information. Now, as you begin to study, and certain things that we bring up are what you would call reference landmarks. Not limited to them, but primal. Once researched, it will connect dots with you in your mind and paint a canvas that otherwise would not exist with you. It would be a, what you would call a fixed reference point, which will cause you to see things that you didn't see before, although they were always there. Do you understand? This is what is symbolized in that movie, National Treasure, with the blue shades that the guy finds with the glasses behind that brick. The brick? Masonry. Masonry. See, the big it to You see? So, as the information becomes your own, because what we're dealing with, and write these things down, there's two major operations that you're dealing with. It's called indexus, just like index, indexus prohibitorum, and indexus expurgatorius. These are two main cover policies operative at the North Gate and exported around the world under the Spanish Inquisition and unum sanctum doctrine of discovery policies of the Constantinian order that loosely you've been calling or trained to call white supremacy. Could you, 
Yes. Right. Could you repeat that in Dexus Prohibitorum? Prohibitorum. And in Dexus Expurbitorius. This is where you hear loosely, loosely, you will hear them talking about the 300 of, of years and more of the burning books, of books by the Jesuit order through the Bishopric of Rome in all Asiatic and African countries across the planet to send the world into darkness. Loosely they refer to them as the Christian book burnings or the prohibited literature, that's prohibitorum expurgatorius, where it's expended, it's expunged, burned, distorted, that's operational. That's what's in operation. I mean, those who govern know that that's in operation. They're aware of it. You're now aware of it. So when certain things are suppressed or done, even though it's not spoken of in words, you see it, you know it. Meaning that once you understand the modus operandi, people can't fool you anymore. Whether they are co-intelpro operatives amongst your own, which is called the Judas factor, or the Romans who are actually doing the puppetry. They're rolling the strings, meaning the shadow government. They're in the background, you don't see them, but they're really the movers and the shakers. Are we clear? But meanwhile, people can't come to your community, feed you the Black Lives Matter stuff, and you fall for it. And go out there and, and jump in the crowd under the Black hoods, thinking you have protections, and you and your children may get killed. Do, do you understand? Not, it sounds like it's in your interest. It sounds like it means well, and you're really being played, and it's really a CIA operation. It is, actually. Do some research. I won't even give you names. You'll find it yourself. They got some of the oligarchs here that, that are funding it. Oligarchs. Yeah. Huh? George something. Yeah, Soros. Soros. Oh, so you now you know. So now you know who's paying one of the people who are paying off your black leaders. Keep this black thing going. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Once you, want, once you start doing some research, you'll find that the masses absolutely do not know what's going on. They think they do. Do you understand? And they themselves are defending the perpetrators of their own enslavement in the name of blackness and a whole bunch of other things and it appears innocent, doesn't it? It seems like it's in their favor, doesn't it? They don't know anything about descendability and they don't know homosexual policy. That's why it works. That's all an illusion, isn't it? That's why the subject matter, illusions of the world, Is, give, give Dr. Nido the mic. It's Islam, I just Islam. was going to ask if you would spell um, oligarch. Just, oligarch. O, that's a capital O. L, L I G A R C H. Oligarch. Oligarch. Now this is what, uh, uh, now I'm glad you brought that up because this must be affirmed so everybody will have a concept. In 1861 when the Congress for the United States adjourned Sina Dia, S-I-N-E, D-I-A, D -I -A, that means without a day, i.e. they dissolved the government, they were actually secretly setting up for themselves a platform for the oligarchy that you're actually dealing with today, which is called the U.S. democracy, which they actually secretly set themselves up as king's men. And you're actually serving them. They flip the, they flip the switch, and actually you, the masses, have become the food and the servant, and the so-called public servant have become the master, and has been disguised under the Act of Congress 1871. That's why they don't teach the nobility clause to the children in the school, 
under the constitutional instruction of civics. And this is also why a lot of people um, who you would think would be more honest pretend that, that Noble Drali did not set up a civic organization under the Morris Devon and National Movement when in fact he absolutely did. Because they do not want you to study civics, which is the science of government. Because they're stealing your estate. Again, expanding on answering your question. And so, because we have limited time, you know, in the House of Graham to share information, a lot we have to give you reference points or landmarks so that you, in your honesty, can do research or try to prove anything that I'm saying that is wrong. You don't accept anything I'm saying. That's what we tell you. Don't accept what we're saying. We give you reference points so that you can start doing some research. But when you do, you're not really going to find out that your concepts are wrong. A lot of people around you concepts are wrong. And you'll find that a lot of our problems is for lack of knowledge. But you'll also recognize that our people are not only being destroyed for lack of knowledge, that they are funding their own enslavement that they're complaining about. And irresponsibly, now I'm going to repeat this, irresponsibly hiding behind the word religion. I repeat, irresponsibly hiding behind the word religion. Not hiding behind religion, hiding behind the word religion. Not knowing they're getting ready to be exterminated. Problem is, they want to give up their response for a big deal. They don't have a right to do it to these babies. Because they have a birth right too. Just because they pumped out, they don't have a right to sacrifice our babies. And truth is, we're not going to let them get away with it. Thus, illusions of the world. That's why we have the subject matter. That's what we're talking about. Now, we could, and we often do, um, may particularly build on a, 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 a subcategory subject matter, which would be relative to this. But at the same time, as you deal with people, you'll find that in spite of information being presented to them, upon study or call and response, you'll find that most of them are still in gray meaning in the gray area, they still don't get it. They still don't understand the illusion, the operative illusion. They have a lot of data. Make no mistake, they do. And you'll see a lot, of, most of the people, many of the people that are beginning to awaken in the last, say, 20, 30 years, gravitate to uh, once understanding the human trafficking, uh, gravitate to uniform commercial code operations and processes. Uh, trying to get their somewhat control on the world trust a state party to which they have been made uh, to under the spurious 14th Amendment person corporate entities. And so you'll see them even now, you know, trying to authenticate the birth certificate. Uh, very little consideration put upon the marriage certificate, which claims the eggs. Uh, but you see them on the path trying to get their some kind of control on this estate that the Jesuits have been controlling since 1861 with the sale of the government that they don't know originally was themselves. We talk about disassociation, you see. So this is back to being able to discern because see, once you or, or get to a point of being able to make a discernment, a discernment, the illusion can't live. See, put it this way, we're not talking about necessarily the positive spiritual aspects of the representation of the dragon. We're talking about the negative connotations of the dragon. So the dragon vampire can't live unless the illusion lives with you. If the seer can help you 
dissolve the illusion, the dragon cannot live. That's his power, that's his food. His food is your blind faith. Thus, the power of his fiat in the instruments bottomry that are on the stock market. You don't have the capacity and the resources nor the logistical operations to overcome the machinery of the demons. This is why most people give up or most people get a fear, get, uh, become sore afraid when they become conscious because they know that the dragon is already set to devour them. As a matter of fact, you know, symbolically, when you look in the Bible, or Sipagenta, and it shows you the scenario where the woman is with child, and the dragon sits near her, waiting her for her to deliver so it can devour the child. Go look at King Alfred, King, King Alfred, and look at the dissemination of the operations of the parent body politic and subordinate power body politic and see you don't see that scenario right there in the military operations. And that's devouring you as you become conscious. So if the dragon, just consider this, because it's allegorical. The dragon is so bad, and he's waiting for the woman to deliver the child so he can devour the child. Why don't he just eat the woman and the child? He got two meals. Why does it just say he's waiting for her to deliver to devour the child. Is there something about the woman that is a protection that they're not talking about in that book? I mean, look at the obvious. If the beast, if the beast is standing by with the woman that's with child, and the beast is waiting for her to deliver so it can devour the child. Why don't just devour her with the child got two meals? What is it about her in that book why the beast ain't just pouncing on her, eating her and the baby or why gotta wait for the baby to be delivered? Because it's a it's a message behind it. Because that birth is your consciousness. That birth is your airship. Now do you understand the symbolism, symbolism of Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz? Why the female imagery? We know that she's Albion, but the imagery, why female? Why the three ruffians symbolized by the aunt and the farmer, etc. And then they become what? Tribe of Judah. The lion, then straw man, 14th Amendment, the spurious operations, suppression of the nobility clause, then the tin man, rusty industry that they cribbed, then the yellow brick road, the zodiac constitution in the courtyard of Philadelphia before they moved the capital to the Seven Hills of Washington, Emerald City, Star of Venus. You see? And then the theme of the story, the, the red ruby slippers that was once silver in the original script. Then the, the story goes like this. Um, Dorothy, you're home. You always were home. You never left home. You just bumped your head. That's the theme of the Wizard of Oz is really telling you the scenario of the suppression of the Moabites, lack of knowledge, bumping head, even the ritual that's used in the secret orders with the Jubala, Jubalo, Jubalon, the three ruffians, that's used in the Bible also when King James was Prince, England, Ireland, Scotland, rulership of the Lords of London granted by the Most High to Prince James, whose honor is later given in the transliteration of the book under King James to then Jesus. When you understand the history, all of these scenarios become very clear and the illusion is removed. Illusions of the world. I mean, it's operative in your everyday life. 
But if you don't know it's talking about you, you're thinking 2,000 years ago. No, that's when it was set in its cosmological projection, a movement of the wheel, which are what? Astrological projections, which you call prophecies. It's mathematical projection. So if the people don't have a background, they can't see themselves. You see the point? Thus, they're caught in the false matrix, the false mother. This is where you get parents patre that is used by the corporate state, where the corporate state corpse is claiming to be your mother. This is why the people are listed as war to the state, i.e. they're controlling your estate. That's the world trust. That's where the straw man or the ends leg is transmitting utility is rooted. However, you know and I know that while the people are waking up to some of this stuff, they don't really have a clear understanding. I mean, it's not their fault, it's misrepresented. Then you have a lot of people on our side of the nation that are seizing upon them as they develop and are extracting from them resources that are related to things that are absolutely their birthright. Are we clear? Knowing that when they perfect the process, it will not be honored. It's sort of like a card game. You win this card, you can jump in the suit. And then you start finding out your Alice in Wonderland. You know, you jump, in, you jump out of the hole, out of the hole, but you're in another hole. Then the sign says go left, and you're in another tunnel. Then you come back to where the sign was, and it's pointed back to the same direction, to another direction. And it continues. Illusions of the world. This is where the multiple processes that they keep promising people that begin on the path of understanding the world trust operations without clearly understanding it gets bounced around. They start one process, you complete that process, and then as soon as you get there, you think that you want to get a discharge, and they say, oh, you got to do this process now because they changed this at the UCCs. Now you got to go get it. This is why it came from the HMOs to the financial statements to the UCC1 financial statements, UCC1 and 9 and 3, and now it's the birth certificate. And then as soon as they perfect that, there will be another, another merry-go-round waiting for them. Problem is, for the Romans, this is the problem. The Manchurians are cutting it short by killing the platforms. See, they can't mean that the, the dark priesthood can continue to create these false bonds, which are referred to loosely as derivatives. That's a safe way for the public to hear about them, not knowing that they're talking about bottom re instruments. They'll just say derivatives or quantitative easing, stuff like that. They're really creating bonds on top of the bonds and selling them because it's all about human trafficking. You see? With the humans not knowing they're being trafficked. And so when they find out a little bit, they're trying to do these processes that are introduced to them that's going to give them some sovereign power of discharge that actually belongs to the United States Corporation Company. That's their obligation. But because they're controlling your estate, being an heir, which they're not talking about, they don't want you to understand that. And so as people grow and develop, they'll present from time to time, according to their development, these different processes for so-called capturing the straw man. Do, do, you, do you understand? And with the capturing of the straw man, you're thinking that you're going to get a control of this estate upon which these bonds are administered by the subdivisional agencies of the United States Corporation Company, military arm of the Jesuit order under the Un Sanctum Operations, i.e. the imposter shadow government. And as soon as you complete the process, they'll change the rules. And that'll buy them a couple more years, which is what they've been doing. I'm just bringing that to your attention so that you don't fall for it. 
knowing that the only way that the dragon comes out of the gateway of the cave is that you starve him. And he promises that you may be walked up to him, he's going to devour him. I want to give you an apple if you come a little closer. I'll let you pass. You will? Yeah, sign this. Then you make a compact. That's another bottom ranch. <laughs> Don't make a pack with him. I don't care what you do, you make a pack with him. Any contract you make with him, he's going to lift that signature. Because you're the heir to the estate. Go ahead. I know you have a question. If we if we nationalize, do that put us in control of our state? Now, what do you say? Let's let's back up. Okay. Now, let's make that statement again because I want everybody to hear this. Okay. If if we nationalize, if we, so that's conditional. Okay. Or, or when we nationalize, when we still conditional. But <laughs> no, don't, 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 no. Are we ever in control of the state? Then? Okay. Now, what you're trying to do is get in control of the state. Therefore, you got to know this: the state exists, right? So if you don't know the history and the politics, it doesn't resonate with you, does it? When I say you, we're talking plural. We're not just talking about us in this room. So if the world of people in our communities don't know that the Spanish Inquisition is about them, do they relate to it? It ain't got nothing to do with us, like some brother said on the train today. Therefore, they don't involve themselves with this because they don't associate with it. Because their pride tells them that they're spiritual and they're outside of this. Like one of the brothers was saying, see, see, that's of the world. Like they ain't. What about yeah. those that do know? Or does it take a certain does amount it, of us? Does it? Yes. Isn't it that do your brothers keep them? Yes. Isn't it that a lot of people get this information, they start trying to make a business out of selling packages to their own people about their estate without teaching them the truth of this history, which we're talking about today? Yes. And upon the challenge that the administrators of these estates, as soon as they come from a backdoor question, these people walk back into the colorable jurisdiction, not even knowing the distinction between the two hats, which makes them incompetent. And then they get frustrated trying to find out a new angle to get a hold of that estate and they think they're wrong when the real deal is they don't know what the hell they're doing because they're trying to get a hold of the estate when they're not qualified. So are you in control of your estate? No. No. I'm working towards that. Why do you think I'm sharing information with you? Because if I don't share it with you, you don't share it with her and him, and they don't share it with their brothers and sisters and families, you ain't getting nothing. What is unity referred to on the international level? It's called nationalization. Do the masses amongst our people know that when they keep talking about unity, they're talking about nationalization? Do they equate them? No, they do not. It's called competence, isn't it? What occurs with people that begin to get this information and become a threat to cabal? What has been the pattern? Don't they eliminate them? Yes. Hmm? Isn't it the best interest of those who know to tell someone who does not know? What's the distinction between an unalienable right, i.e. substantive birthright, distinguished from privileges and license. Give the mic. What's the distinction? Give the mic. What's the distinction? Ask question again. What is the distinction between unalienable slash substantive birthrights compared to, to privileges, licenses, etc.? What is the distinction? Well, one can be taken away at any time. Which one? the license and privileges. Why? Because if you allow somebody to give you something, they can take it back. That's well, it's not just, well, you, that's in the park. You're in the park, but that's not exactly the answer, but you're, in, you're close. Because it's regulated under feudal law. The privileges and licenses, feudal. The Constitution, nature's law and nature's God, is divine law. And it is not indeed civil rights, but it is actually birth rights. 
therefore it cannot be sold or transferred to another. That's called unalienable rights. And the treaty and constitution is in place to secure your unalienable rights. Now, do you understand what Noah Drawley said? That our people have been taken outside of the constitutional form of government, what he's saying to you. And so, the two hats, you've been governed under this hat, and you haven't been challenging it, because you thought it was de jour, when it's de facto. The de jour is over here. So you gotta leave this camp, denounce this plant, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and go back to your ancient mothers and fathers in principle, in knowledge, and political allegiance. That's nationalization. And you must proclaim it to the world. You must make it public. Because you're assumed as property until such things take place. And you must do it affirmatively. Failure to do so is called tacit acquiescence. Write that down because you're going to be using it. Tacit, T-A-C-I-T, -A -A acquiescence, A-C-Q, acquiescence. And this is what's in operation. So if there's no clear, distinct, affirmative rebuttal of the fraud, you're assumed in it. That's not moral or ethical, but that is indeed the political fact. That is indeed the political fact. Are we clear? And this is, and I'm saying that not on opinion, I'm telling you that's how these things are operating. And so when you, and this is plural, out of your own mouth, claim to be Negro, Black, or Color, you're, you're agreeing to the codes that you should be refuting. But if you didn't know estate law, you wouldn't know that that's what you're doing. But the incompetence does not release you from the obligation of agreement to being something that you're not, thus expendable as the stock. This is why so much effort is put into promoting the black non de gear. Write that down, non de gear. N O M hyphen D E hyphen G U E R R E. Non de gear, that's the misnomer brand system that was set up for the U.S. corporate operations. And you can make reference to these names of the German nat naturalists. Frederick Johann Blumenbach, these are reference points. And Carlos Linnaeus, usually referred to in history and anthropology as Carl Linnaeus. And this is the expanded promotion of the color code systems that you're using now and in the U.S. Census Bureau, which is why the humans think that human beings are crayons, not knowing they're being trained like rats. And of course, uh, the leaders amongst them are given the appearance of legitimacy when they're absolutely not. It's overseers. So once again, the illusions of the world, when you start making the distinctions, you don't get caught up in personalities. Just because it's your cousin, and he's the imam or the reverend, and you be looking at him as a man of God, but he doesn't know, and that's why he keeps saying black, and he's doing the marks and the right stuff. No, he's a pro and tell for obvious. Stop, stop deluding yourself. Overseers didn't end in 1865. Get over yourself, get over your ego, get over your beliefs, and stop playing and sacrificing your babies. And stop justifying ignorance because you're not excused. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, I, all week I've been uh, online looking at the different moral sites. Um, do you know of any that we should avoid, you know, per se? You know, I never, I never try to tell people to avoid things. The reason why is because you need things to compare. See, because if you don't know what hot is, you can't discuss cold too good. And if you don't know what cold is, you can't discuss hot too good. 
And I'm going to kind of look at it this way. This is even based on the experience that I had earlier this week. I have respect for opposition. Sometimes opposition is necessary to cause people to learn. The issue is to get you to think again. The issue is to give and share with you, as you would share with me, maxims of law and reference points so that you can get back to standards. See, it's like this. When you knock something that's in opposition to you, what is it? Are you scared of people finding out something that opposes what you're saying that you will competitively lose? I say this, any scholar that is honest and assured in her or his scholarship does not fear information coming from others, but in fact welcome, welcomes it. Because eventually the, the person or the student or the neophyte will have something to compare to. We know they're going to get knocked around a bit, but won't they learn? So if somebody says to you, Two and two is really three and a half because spiritually, and they start that stuff, and it's a matter of interpretation. You know, that's a common theme in our communities. Of course, history has proven that none of this stuff has worked in their favor. And if they haven't released some of these things yet, that means they deserve the outcome. But however, if you condemn the so-called interpretation of a competing position who says two and two is three and a half according to interpretation or denomination, they will look at you as being envious or jealous. But if you let them experience that, they will learn in due time that, guess what, two and two is four, even in China. Whoa! And on the moon, you took two moon rocks here and two moon rocks there. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Still like three and a half. And after a while, they're going to be forced to accept that. But if they're believers, they'll make it be whatever they want to be. They even start talking ebonics to make green actually mean purple polka dots. Because ebonically, we can make it mean what it means because. We're the ancient black man of the blackness of the hotel of the cosmology in the air. And we can make it mean what we want it to mean. You know, it means exactly what it means. The science is called etymology, already on the planet. From the ancient Africans, that's where the science came from. So why do these people keep on trying to make up new rules for the game just because they're too damn lazy to study? This is the problem we have. Keep trying to make things mean what they don't mean just because we're out of order, trying to make the world out of order to fix our disorder rather than us turning our hearts back to our ancient mothers and fathers since the earth has been hit with a curse because of our disorder that we keep blaming everybody else on, including Romans who seizing like vultures upon our insistence on being ignorant. And then when the Romans say, don't worry about those little pickaninnies. They will never compete because they can't read. And the ones who can, won't. Give them a watermelon and a check and they will give you their children and everything else. Give them facts and they'll start debating about their beliefs that we gave them. They'll tell you that black and white are primary colors, even though in third grade children are instructed. The primary colors and that black and white are extremes of the color spectrum and are not classified technically as colors at all. But Carlos Linnetos told them that that means Afrocentricity, and they take the brand on with pride and put themselves in a dead status thereby the corporate state can cheat their estates. But rather than deal with the fact of what's going on, they'll start talking about racism because we train them. They don't know that race is the human species. If they can't read, 
Then you'll start talking about being spiritual. Everybody on the planet knows that spirit is breath, and spirituality is the art of breathing. And that Kabbalism is the philosophies, which is the religion, and they go together. However, they're separate subject matters. But they call spirituality praying and doing a hallelujah to you, because we told them so. They are under control. Therefore, they suck our opiate, and they are the food. Now they want to march and pray and complain, and the world does not take them serious. Why should they? Any being that refuses to use the divine intelligence to solve problems are stakes on the tables of the dragon, of the elite. That's written right in Executive Order 490. They're there to be devoured by consent. This document is not a secret. But ain't these people keep talking about they got a special relationship with Yahweh, God, Allah, Moses, Muhammad, Jesus, and this. Does the world take them serious yet? They don't take themselves serious. They refuse to deal with reality. So it's unfortunate, but should the world feel sorry for people who are the direct heirs of the world's largest estate? the direct heirs and descendants of once sovereign kings, queens, and pharaohs, and now they're at the base of all humanity dealing with the most banal operations of mind control coming from the Romans who are occupying their land, and they don't know the difference between a corpse and a living, while claiming to be spiritual, arrogantly claiming to be spiritual. I just described the true politics here, have not. When you mentioned uh, Nam de Guerre, we know it means a war name, so it's... That's exactly right. And what's the, con is that a connection with the trading with the enemy yet, or anything? Exactly. Can you interject on that a little bit? All right. This is where, now we're going back to the coup d'etat and the platforms that were built up to operate. So therefore, the true American people are declared the enemy, aren't they? By the people that are operatively pretending to be, quote unquote, the government. I.e., they're using governmental powers to actually wage war on the people under the Trading with the Enemy Act. Now, look at the Trading of the Enemy Act and then relate that to the Buck Act. And you'll see the continued operations. And these are absolutely the injuries that are befalling people of Asiatic African descent, specifically and distinctly. But rather than deal with that, they will sit around and talk about racism and colors because they're trained like rats to do so. However, the operations is doing sanctum policy. It's documented, it's not a secret. The guidance manuals, Executive Order 11490, it's not a secret, it's documented. Rex 84, it's not a secret, it's documented. Christian Black Code 1724, it's not a secret, it's documented. These are the manuals of operation. The Negro Act, the Buck Act, the Black Codes, King Alfred, Rex 84, Homeland Security, continuous operation of the same Unum Sanctum, Doctrine of Discovery, political platform, built for administrative operations, Act of Congress, 1871. You see the point? So if people look at these different things in a vacuum, in a vacuum, they don't, so you say, trading with the enemy act, the people aren't thinking today Homeland Security, are they? If you're talking of trading with the enemy act, the people aren't thinking about the murder of them two brothers this past week, are they? People who know real politics know exactly that that's what I'm saying to them. I mean, they're not caught in the illusion because they already know the operations. This is why we're talking. 
so that you don't get caught in the illusion. Because their strength is you, that's us plural, being caught in the illusion. They feed off of our blind faith. The fiat operates off our blind faith. When the blind faith ends, their power ends. But the people are afraid for their power to end because the people have been compromised with a job called a job within the structure of their own enslavement. Therefore, they're reluctant to act on truth. Truth becomes the enemy. Trading with the enemy act. So you actually become what? Fratricidal. Politically fratricidal. This is again why schismata operates in so-called black communities. And also write that word down so you can look it up. And it's political application, schism. S-C-H-I-S-M. Schism is what is called, what's loosely referred to as divide and conquer. Uh, fractional, you said fractional Fratricide. This is, fratricide is a common social anomaly existing at North America in all general so-called black and colored communities. This is where you have what they will loosely refer to as black on black crime. Black on black death. No divided families, single parent homes, welfare checks, no man, women bashing, man bashing, disorder, disrespect. That's fratricide. It is a trained condition under the black code system set forth in all of the states in an administrative manner in 1868 with the creation of the dead corpse as person corporation 1868 and of course solidified in its political platform 1871 and so that's where you get the closing of the freedmen's bureau creation of the straw man then the Platform of Operations Act of Congress 1871. I'm trying to show you correlatives so that you don't get caught in the smokescreen in between with people in the name of scholarship keep promoting the non de gear falsely and knowingly implying that it's Afrocentric identity. Knowing that it absolutely isn't. They're actually war names. That's what the brands are. So the brands are war names, not the gear. And Trading with the Enemy Act is an ongoing, ongoing activation of the Unum Sanctum policies. And what they do on top of it, it this is why when you're looking at the uh, Trading with the Enemy Act, you will look at it during the uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt administration period time and uh, House Joint Resolution 192 that's referenced uh, June the 5th of 1933, the, um, what they're calling the bank holidays, all that kind of stuff. All of it is relative. And it really is, is the ongoing rapery and the stealing of our state. Then you go back to the Berlin Conference of 1884. That's when you trace it to the congressional records, you'll see the um, secret treaty of Verona, and you'll see the agreement of the Jesuit order, you know, the Vatican, United States Corporation Company, and the District of London operating together, which is symbolized and represented by your three stars and two bars that you see in Washington, also at 18th Street in Philadelphia, next to the cathedral, and on the tags of the uh, automobiles with the tags of Washington, D.C. That's the agreement. And so what you see, active, active, active trading with the enemy act. And this is why also, this is why when you see um, people who uh, have a little bit more knowledge of the real history and de jure law, when they jump through all the hoops and difficulties and get any case, which they rarely do because they're usually blocked, Pass the corporate states and go to the Supreme Court. That's why they win 
almost every time when they talk about traffic, right of travel, needing no license to work or to travel, almost that's why they win. Once they get past the one side, because the Supreme Court has to kind of represent the de jure law. And this is why the, the lower court operatives always block people from ever doing what you call removals. Because they're operating the one second policy. And it doesn't mean that the Supreme Court isn't compromised, because they indeed are. However, they're caught in a rock and a hard place. It's why they try to avoid cases ever getting there. But as soon as you get to there, they, they gotta operate the de jure law. Matter of fact, that's why they assassinated that guy, Rob, who was it? Um, the guy, they, the uh, Senator Lee, um, murdered a couple months ago. The judge? Uh, I, forget his, I forget his name. I do apologize for that. And act like he had a heart attack. They found with a pillow over his head. Oh, the big guy, uh, he's like yeah, a tag. Well, you know, he's a big time, he, he was he, because he was a constitutionalist. <coughs> he was going against the, uh, the cabal. You know, but I mean, again, once you understand the real politics, none of the things that they do either surprises you and it doesn't get away from you. Meaning that you can see through the veil when the masses are sitting around arguing about Trump and Hillary. Scholars know they're all part of the same club. They're all Wigan Wars, whether they're cotton wigs or conscience wigs, they're Wigan Wars. My question. My question to you is, uh, you know, as I study a little bit about Europeans and this whole system, we brought them out of the caves, quote unquote. Uh, so, now, so now, slow down, so keep everybody with us. When you say they brought, we brought them out of the caves, who is the we, what is the cave, what is the arts, disciplines that brought them out, what is the name of the period so that people can have a reference? Oh, you got me there. <laughs> See, but I shouldn't. See, this is what I'm trying to say to you. When we make statements like that, we're supposed to have reference points. In the um, Renaissance, 13th century to the 6th century, the Moors went into Europe, taught what is known as the liberal arts, built universities and cathedrals. All your major universities and cathedrals in Europe were built by Moors. The seven liberal arts come from Moorish culture, bringing the European out of the medieval period into the modern world. The science and the discipline is regulated, preserved under what is called masonry and road scholarship. And those are the Europeans that pretty much administrate world governments today. That's what you said. And you need to know that that's what you said. However, when we make those statements and don't qualify it with reference documents that can be researched and challenged, our people will never take the information serious. They don't connect it. They think it's your mere opinion. Once you reconnect them, now you've made them responsible. Now they can't continue to say it's your stuff. Well, that's them wars over there. That's world fact, world knowledge, world culture. They're responsible. They've been irresponsible and thus abused. They've been outside of the constitutional fold of government and have been subject to all kinds of abuses. They don't know the wheat from the tape. They don't know the peel from the orange slices. They don't know they're designated as uncivilized and are treated accordingly. They don't know that what they've been given is dogmata. They think they're spiritual. They think they have religion. They've never had religion. They've got dogmata. They've never had money. They've got fiat. They've never had jurisprudence. They've got color law. And they think they're saved. And their families are being destroyed with their ignorance that they persist on protecting under the black codes. They insist on being black, and a program is afoot to make them permanently black. And they don't know. They're being informed 
again while you're here. Do you understand? And we have to get over our egos because we keep defending false concepts because we believe them to be true. They are indeed not true. This, collectively, and more, is part of what nationalization is. It's not a document. It's not you signing the paper. It's not just paper. It's a consciousness that goes with it because the test is without paper. The test is from the tongue and the heart and the mind. And if you cannot express the truth of the honor of your mothers and fathers, you are held in dishonor and you will be expended. This is what their intention is. But their intention is not necessarily honorable. They're using the guise of honor. But their intent is to steal your estate. So if the heir is dead, they can claim, well, yeah, well, we, we, we told him, we, we put Obama up there. Obama showed them the Al Moroccan flag. He signed it right to the indigenous people. They told them to declare their nationality. Michelle went to the Alhambra. You can see they want to be niggers. They keep saying it to justify themselves. This is really what, I'm not, this is not a scenario. This is really what they're using. And so you will even see Europeans claiming these people don't love themselves, so why are they complain about us? And then, and then they start putting statistics down, which a lot of people have been presenting lately, particularly since these latest assassinations, which are not the end, of putting percentages, how, much, how many Asiatics die at Asiatics' hands under the black hoods, distinguished from how many Asiatics die from Europeans under the white hoods, and showing the imbalance. I think it's 88% to 90, something like that. You know, it's just a justification. It's not, it's not, it's not morally or ethical, ethically justified, but they're using those statistics to justify them murdering these brothers. I think that Dr. Dr. Nadio was trying to say something? Oh, I thought I was reading body motion. Oh, okay. right. Oh, all right. At the end, I have something, so. All right. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to know, uh, what do you see as a timeline from now, uh, you know, maybe like 2025? This is, what I, this is what I see. Let's talk about what you can refer to. Not what I see, because I've been telling this for years. I've been talking the same lines for 30 years, more. So it's not new to me. Um, but if I were to answer your question honestly now, I'd say you're living it right now. It's sort of like when people say, when the storm coming and they're wet. You know what I mean? Um, when's the collapse coming when it already happened? What you have is dark trees to doing what you call damage control. And then trying to preserve and finding safety nets and negotiating with assassins around the world trying not to get eliminated totally. There's a bounty already out on the world. Because too many of them sell out. Meanwhile, the heirs are still asleep, playing Negro games with the help of their leader guys who are, getting, who are selling them out. And they don't know they're selling them out because they're usually saying Yahweh, Allah, Jesus, and the people get blinded as soon as they start using these passwords. Because they trust them. Most of them got 501c3 skull and bone kickback agreements that these people think come from the Lord in heaven when it comes from the Lords of London. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And it's hard to tell the truth because they will defend, they will defend the falsehood thinking that you're anti-God, anti-government, anti-justice. And you just threw them a life raft. Do you, do you, but until they begin to really study. That's why it's important to give landmark information. Because until they start looking at these expurgatorious issues, they keep thinking this is mere opinion. They think this is a belief system. They think it's a religion sect of Islam. It's their estate and their birthright. And the restoration of the same predicated on their themselves, their activities, or their lack thereof. Trading with the enemy. Islam, Dr. Naeem? I, I have a couple. Give her a mic. Give her a mic. Islam, I want to share a couple of uh, pieces I've written in this last week or so because they, 
kind of relates to what you've been talking about tonight. Yes. Um, on the 4th of July, <clears throat> I, woke, I woke up at 9-11. Um, at least I thought it was 9-11, but my clock was the hour fast, was really 8-11. But 9-11 um, kind of triggered something in me, and I wrote a piece. And I've been seeing 9-11 a whole bunch ever since the 4th of July. Yes. But on the 4th of July, um, I wrote um, something called My Independence Day, which I shared with you, and I subtitled it, Fourth of You Lie. Yes. Um, and it says, I woke up today at 9-11, which has become a symbol for disaster and tragedy. So I ask the universe, what are you saying to me? Um, is this a warning of something that's about to be? Should I sound an alarm or post an alert? Is there some crazy shit looming that my thoughts can avert? Or should I remain silent and concentrate on positive outcomes so my thoughts and inclinations don't help get fears work done? It's amazing how often we're used as fears for by manipulating our thoughts and energy to generate more misery, suffering, senseless pain that merely contributes to selfish elitist gain. Such a list of staged events and worldwide disasters down through the years from, for the sole purpose of generating more and more fear. From War of the Worlds right up to Orlando, there's so much high level BS going on that everybody should know. Unfortunately, many are still unaware and have no clue they're in the enemy's crosshairs. And no matter how much you present undeniable proof, they cling to the notion they already know the truth. So, on this so-called day of liberty, I consciously create my own reality and declare my mind, thoughts, and words independent of media programming, fear, and government spies, while others oblivious enjoy the 4th of July. And and that was that was that was before the actual the shootings yes. took place. I guess a, day, a couple days later. Um, and then yesterday, I, I got a quote of things. But yesterday, I wrote this. It's just called "Who We Gonna Be," and it, it just makes me think what you're talking about. It says, "Trying to figure out who we really want to be, settling and fighting for a false identity that distorts and conceals our true nationality." Stop trading places with the enemy. Wake up, get up, when we're really going to see. Know why there's no ground on which to stand? Because we're looking for redemption unaware we're on our land. Focus for years on one patch of ground when throughout the whole universe our presence is found. Embracing his story, neglecting the glory of our ancient existence and deity like paupers. Living like paupers is the real tragedy. Meanwhile, we're killing, marching, chilling, and being distracted by unscrupulous actions of so-called elitist ruling factions. Will our ignorance help their plan to depopulate the land while, being with, while beings without souls become their automated slaves? And we cry out to their mythos, what must I do to be saved? Or will we rise above the lies and reconnect with the Most High when we use our third eye to see where divinity truly resides? I'm not trying to raise the stink, I'm just trying to make us stink on a more critical level. Know who is the real quote unquote devil. Don't be fooled by what we're shown. The jig is up, their cover's blown. This stuff ain't real, it's a holographic dream, a hocus pocus elaborate made up scheme to keep everyone blind and under subjection while the world's in chaos in need of corrections. Stop looking for help to come from a system created to keep you trapped without wisdom. We are the answer we desire to see. Now tell me, people, who we want to be. Hmm. Dr. Naomi Gillen, the next book, those of you who are familiar with some of her work, I know some of you have her book, um, The Amusing of an Undercover Writer, and those of you who don't have it, do yourself a favor, take that with you. But she's sharing with us some of the workings. I know she has other work that she's been working on. Uh, this is for her next book. And that's really appreciated. But isn't it kind of interesting how synchronicity operates? You know what? I, I went home because I couldn't find my I left my glasses home that mm -hmm. went up the second time. And I walked into one of my rooms where the, the clock, I guess, is always right, even if it's wrong twice a day. Mm -hmm. Just not sure when. Um, but the clock said 9-11, and I said, there I go again. Why am I seeing 9-11? Um, 
um, for my intuition, I found that for me that's been a trigger for they're up to some more stuff. Exactly. And every time I see 9 11, it just re triggers in me and reminds me. Like I said, I saw 9 11 three times two days ago, and then Paris or whatever it was happened. Yes, the murder. So, yeah. And so, and I realized, and we realized, just like you said, you can't be frustrated or I mean, you can't be fearful. That's what I'm going to say. Right. Because I call fear fake. Um, you know what it what it is is really fake engineering altering reality. Yes. So much stuff is engineered, so much stuff is CGI, green screen, you look at the news casters and they you know it's all programmed and yes. they're, they're standing behind a green screen and screen and trying to make you think that they stand in the middle of the street in Dallas and yes. somewhere in a studio, yes. you know, with a script yes. and trying to evoke a fear and, and you know the things that you're trying to do. Off the dark Absolutely that's the energy. And that's the energy, because that's what I said. I mean, I will not, and I, and I, I said, well, I have some things that you all can take, but like right after the 9-11 um, thing, after that, I, I did an update, and I said, I said something was looming on the 4th of July, so folk would wake up and not be taken by surprise. But were they listening? It appears not. And basically, I said, I'm in the energy conservation mode, and I'm not going to exhaust mine or my mind to create someone else's reality. And that's what we're doing when we yes. get all caught up in this stuff, we're making, we're making somebody else's agenda, you know, fulfilling yes, it. we're feeding them. We're feeding it we, with our energy. And so I do what I can with my little pieces as they come to share with people just to, just uh, just what you're saying. You said, it, you know, we keep it to ourselves or just a few and they know it, then we become a target. But when you start to teach others, you know, yes. reach others, and that starts to sink in. That is really your protection from the divine. When you recognize the Kabbalistic nature of you are your brother's keeper. It means if you want for yourself, the cosmic mother recognize you when you help to rescue her other children. That's where your reward is. But you do it without seeking a reward. It comes with the nature of things. Therefore, what you want for others or what you want for yourself want it for others. In all that you do, do no harm. If you think to do, or to use, or to operate, or to access the mother planet, always think seven cycles or seven generations ahead, and in all that you do, do no harm. It is this where the rewards come. This is your account in the, what they call the astral or heavenly sphere. And this is the operations of the philosophies of true religion is very basic, it's not complex. And where Yahshua says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And on that hinges all of the law. And it's a very basic principle, you know. Um, of course, you know, the people have been abused so long, they take things, statements like that as spurious or, yeah, that's a spooky stuff. But they're fundamental maxims of truth. And true religion is very, very simple. It really absolutely is, you know. But anyway, I want to thank you for that, Dr. Nayela. And I'm looking forward, and I'm just saying this openly so that you all can look forward and encourage you to continue the good work that you've been doing because that takes on a life of its own. And you know and I know, and it's not knocking people, but most people know that in their heart and don't have the courage to put it to the pen. They'll say pacification type stuff, testimonial type stuff, getting people all emotionally charged and know they're going to go, they're not bringing remedy because they're not dealing with the spirit of truth. And when you deal with the spirit of truth, it's a narrow path and people don't necessarily like you. However, that's where the cure is. And we're charged to stop faking, faking that we just fear God. We just fear the Most High. These people fear that European. He's their God. They won't buy, they won't sell, they won't move, they won't breathe without the mark of the number of his name, the license. And that's how they guide themselves. However, because the hypocrisy has become so deep and so strong, the assassins have been released on the planet to put pressure on the dark priesthood. And uh, sort of like since the Arizona speak up, other Asiatics have come together 
to speak up for them through their actions. And so the safe way for the Romans to call it, they'll call it the reset. The reset is not something new or the restoration of any new republic. It's the restoration of the allodial principles of the original covenant, which is the Constitution and Treaty for the United States for the securing of the rights of the people and in their favor. That's what's taking place. And the, all the other conflict and stuff is the civil war that's going on undercover and the negotiations that are taking place on the planet to neutralize the dark priesthood to reach a happy medium. So it's sort of like a win-win situation, actually bringing balance as opposed to eliminating one or the other. And with that, I say to you, thank you all for coming out to the House of Reawakening Minds, giving support to the House, share the information with others, bring someone with you, bring someone with you, that will bring much remedy. And the reason, again, that we made certain reference points, because if you do some research on reference points, it will give you new bodies of information to share with those who don't quite understand this. And a lot of questions that logically and intelligently will come up when we're discussing these things, you will answer them yourselves. You know, you know more than what you think you know. The only thing that we're actually doing is, is drawing lines to the dots of the puzzle. That's always been in front of you anyway. And this is what is called restoration in war strategy is called restoration of reference points primal. Part of the operations of Unum Sanctum and the doctrine of discovery is to remove reference points. This is this has to do with policies under expurgatorius and prohibitorium by operational factors. So when you're aware of them, you can look at certain points and see, even when you're listening to people, listening to different questions, you can see where the sickness is because you see yourself. Do you understand? Because they become a mirror for you. And then you see yourself where you were at different points, and you can go immediate to the medicine, to the remedy. This is why a lot of times when you're uh, talking to people who, who study the priesthood, why sometimes it is they can seem like they're smart. They're not really smart. They just know reference points. You know, that's all it is. It's no different than when someone knows the machinery, you know, oh, wow, man, I've been to five mechanics and they couldn't fix my car. And I went to this guy in his back army's alley, and he said, this old school guy, and he said, start the car up. He got in, put the brakes on the back, and moved forward. He says, no, it ain't all that. He went on there and did a little bit of stuff with some wires on the hood, and I've been running good ever since. You know, it's really understanding the engineering. And this is why we're giving you a background. Once you understand how you got to where you are, you can backtrack. That's called navigation. You see the point? So once you know what was wrong, you can find out some of those other things in between that have eluded you. But it also gives you insight that people who you may have respected at one time, you'll be able to tell them they've been playing you by what is called lies by omission. That's called experimentorious. You see? And stuff that they destroy. You know what I mean? Or stuff they did deny you, that's called prohibitory. And keep in mind, everybody in power knows these rules because it's taught to them. I repeat, people that are in administrative positions of power know these things because it's taught to them in degrees. It's how they get their titles. Just because it's not discussed with the public does not mean that's not what's going on. Once you understand these things, things that got past you don't get past you anymore. It's no different than once you understand the game of three-column model. The guy that used to come on the corner taking your little cousin's 
little five dollars or six dollars and throw them up. This car is this. I mean, this one's the seed of it. Oh, I've got this. And they keep taking their lunch money. But once they don't know the game, the guy got to go to some other neighborhood because he can't get over no more. Same thing. I'll tell you. The illusions of the world. Apropos what Dr. Nye <laughs> I actually was inspired to write, which is her spirit to liberate. She's a liberator. She's an angel of light. She's a, she's a liberator. And the beautiful thing about it is, is, is the averting and the willfulness to take the path, the high path, and to use her oratory and thinking and skills that is part of the character that she is and convert it to helping to liberate the brothers and sisters. And that is certainly honorable. It is certainly honorable because many people will compromise for a few pieces of silver not to walk that path because it is a sacrifice, but it's a demonstration of love, divine, truthfully it is. And that's the courage. And so to that I commend you and I give you a hand for me, Dr. Nayeli Hill. Again, thank you for coming out to the House of Ram. Come again, bring somebody with you. Take notes, build questions. One more thing, Dr. Nayeli. Yes. Now keep this in mind, you all. So always bring, take some for yourself and also for your family members. School us again. Come, come up so you can get on the film, please. Because I know you're humble. My niece. <laughs> no, I have um, Diatomaceous Earth, which um, Brother Taj is, uh, takes. And he said, I got a larger, I got larger bags today. But um, has anybody ever heard of D.E., Diatomaceous Earth? Just tell them. Okay, well, it, it got papers that go with it, but um, it actually is a silica. It's made from, um, I guess it, it comes from the sea. And you can take this like a teaspoon. Uh, you, take, you do take a teaspoon. I, I do. You know, I just take it dry. Yeah, you now, can take what, what, it. What, well, you can mix it in like uh, water or yeah. juice or smoothies or whatever. And the, the things that it, it helps, it helps to maintain your, your cholesterol levels. It, 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 it does a lot of things. It helps you with osteoarthritis. and It helps you with all this stuff. I'm trying to, which I have everything written down. Um, you can even give it to your pets. Um, this is food grade. Um, it kills parasites and detoxes. Yes. Um, this is a picture of what it looks like magnified. It looks like little checks, but that's what that looks like. What this powder stuff looks like it's magnified, and it absorbs toxins once you go through your through your gut and cleanses and scrubs your gut of all like the goo. Kills parasites. Takes um, mucus out. out of your body. Reduces inflammation. Um, I got four pages of what it does, and so. Um, this bag, this is like three quarters of a pound. These are bigger. This is ten dollars, and you get a you get a, a, a background sheet on it. How? Oh, I'll take I'll take that one because I, I got somebody I was talking about to you the other day, so I'll take okay. that one. Okay, yeah. so I have I bought ten of them here today, but um, anyway, it is real good stuff, and it is for almost everything that ails you. And it's, if you, if not for yourself, somebody like like um, Brother Todd said, for your family members, and just a teaspoon in your. Mm -hmm. From the factory, from the